Hi, my name is Robert Strigham. I've been interested in karate since I was very young. I first started studying karate when I saw Bruce Lee act as Kato on the Green Hornet many years ago. I have studied Musokai Karate here in Salt Lake for the last 25, 26 years. I've studied with Shihan Kiyoshi Atakaki. Uh, Shihan Atakaki was born and raised in Okinawa and studied karate there with many of the old masters. I've earned my fourth degree black belt from him. Today, I would like to talk as you can see from the board, today I would like to talk about the old uh, Okinawan kata naifanchi. Sometimes it is called naifanchi, sometimes it is called naihanchi, and in Japan it's typically known as teki. And teki just means iron horse, and this was the college students that Futakoshi Sensei was teaching up in Tokyo, and they saw, his, they saw his stance. They saw a horse stance and it looked very strong and that's why they called it Iron Horse. But in Okinawa, it has always been written as a foreign word and it didn't have uh, an associated meaning with it. And I'm gonna talk about that a little more later. On Okinawa, Naifanshi was always considered the first and the last kata. And I kept asking myself, why was this kata so important to the Okinawans? Why was it the first and the last kata? I learned Naifanshi Shodan many years ago, and I didn't like it very much. It moved, as anyone who's done Naifanchi knows, it moved sideways. And I couldn't find any mo movements that I used, that I could use in sparring or fighting. At this same time, some of my seniors were learning Naifanchi Nidan, Naifanchi Sandan, and I wasn't really too excited to, to learn them either. I saw that they also moved sideways and there wasn't any movements that helped in fighting. So I kept asking myself, well, well, why, why was this kata so important to the Okinawan karate practitioners way back when? And the standard answer that many of you have also heard is, well, if you do Daifanchi right, then it strengthens the legs, and it's very important to have strong legs in karate. Well, I, I agree, it is very important to have strong legs in karate. However, this kata has probably been around for over 200 years. 200 years ago, the people on Okinawa were out working in the fields, they were on the fishing boats, they were doing hard physical labor all day long. I'm not sure they needed this kata to strengthen their legs. And so I kept asking the question, why is this kata so important? Why was this considered the first and the last kata? I have many interests and one of my other interests is sailing. And one time I was out on a sailboat and the sailboat was rocking back and forth. And I noticed that everyone else was having a little bit of trouble standing up on the boat. I naturally got into a naifanshi stance and I was able to move with the boat much easier than everyone else. And suddenly I started seeing where the value of this kata came from. And if you look at the geography, in Okinawa. Okinawa is a chain of islands. It's about one of 150 islands. Okinawa is the biggest one. From, but it's still a pretty small island. From top to bottom it's about 60 miles. It's, it's kind of a, a different funny shape. And at the narrowest part it's about three miles and at the widest part it's maybe 20. You were going by boat and you had better learn how to fight on a boat because there were many pirates in this area. So we think 
that this kata was how to fight on a boat. And the meaning of this kata, like I said, this was written always as a foreign word, was on the boat. If you find a Mandarin speaker they will, and ask them to say, on the boat, you will get some version of nai fanchi, nai, you know, nai fanchi. It, it, it was always written in Okinawa as a foreign word, and that was because at that time and even today, people on Okinawa do not speak Mandarin Chinese. This kind of changed over the years, and so what we have done as we have, originally we, we believe that this kata came from China to teach people how to fight on a boat. But over time, this kata, as it went down the different styles, it changed. And while they all may call it naifanchi, naihanchi, or teki, they're all a little bit different. And what we are trying to do is bring all of these katas back to the original kata that came over that taught people how to fight on a boat. Fighting on the boat, it, it, anytime they left Okinawa, even to go to another island, they had to be ready to fight. Just like if you're in an area that has a lot of bandits and you're traveling on land, you have to be ready to fight. This kata, as you fight on a boat, as you look over and you see a pirate coming over the side of the boat, it's very easy to see where this kata comes in. This is what you're doing as this pirate comes over is you're grabbing them by the throat. After you grab them by the throat, then you're hitting them on the head, bringing it down to your knee, and again, stabbing them. I think my neck just fell out. And stabbing them in the neck. It actually is a great kata to learn how to fight on a boat because it does move side to side, just like you have to move when you're on a boat. But to move over and grab someone, and then bring them to the other side of the boat. Anyway, like I said, this cot has probably been around for a couple hundred years. And next thing the Okinawans did was they took the movements in Naifanshi. They wanted to figure out why it worked so well on the boat and what could they transfer over to fighting on the land. And in my next video, I will probably try to explain to you some of the movements in Naifanchi that we found that transfer over to fighting on the land. Also, here in Salt Lake, we'll probably be holding a workshop later this year or early next year. Keep watching this channel and uh, we hope you can make it. But, Again, fighting on the boat is why I think Naifanchi was so important in teaching the people to not only, that already knew how to fight on the land, to fight on a boat. But anyway, thank you for your time today. I very much appreciate it. And uh, we will talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.